Okay, we can start. Uh, it's a pleasure to introduce our first speaker this afternoon, Boris Sigon. His title is Nonlinear Cyclic Homology. Thank you very much. Uh, let me thank the organizers for, well, for organizing this wonderful meeting and for inviting, for, for giving me this opportunity. So uh, I will be talking about things which are partly very old, but um, maybe not quite known. Maybe if you recognize it, tell me, but it's a continuation of those old ideas that never kind of took off. And uh, and uh, those uh, what I was thinking about this, he had some conjecture, I think I did. Uh, and Crichton Ogle wrote a thesis about some some kind of aspects of this. And uh, so let me tell you what's going on. M maybe just go ahead and redefine, or say, well, it's not redefine; it's a new version. of Hochschild and cyclic homology. So let's start with the ring as usual. And let me define a new version of the tensor product as follows. So As with the usual tensor product, you, uh, you know, it's an abelian group generated by uh, n plus one tuples of elements of uh, the group with this additional relation. And the following relations as we Classically, they should be bilinear in, or well, linear in every argument. And we change this relation. Uh, we still, well, we write it like this, but this will be a new operation. And it depends on what is uh, around those two. It's not just abstract operation. It depends on what I have here. And this is the definition. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
So here it is, kind of deformation <laughs> in some sense of the, okay, and then, so in particular, maybe, In particular, uh, A1 is the multiplicative group. Ah, well, uh, abelianization of the multiple. Oh, yeah, it's kind of a provisional definition. Uh, it's a provisional definition, so this will be the abelianization of the abelian, uh, of the multiplicative group. Okay, and then we observe that exactly, you know, like uh, exactly by the same formulas. this one and uh, yes yeah, should I say maybe uh, yeah and also the cyclic permutation so it's a cyclic yeah for the s I put a one yeah yeah exactly the same as uh, yes and the cyclic rotation Okay, I think Lode had a conjecture about precisely this definition over the rationals. I am not sure. Yeah, it was, uh, all, I think all three were uh, independent. But maybe when one looks at it, uh, kind of the K theory goes a little bit in a different direction. So maybe uh, let me tell you. I think what is natural is kind of, let us try to resolve this. Uh, let us complicate the definition by resolving that relation. CL0, yeah, or CL1. So the second tensor power, yes.
So those are generators and there are relations This is one relation, and there is a similar relation. Pardon? Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, 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 uh -huh. yes. Yeah, so it's two, two relations like this. Okay, and next step is to resolve this uh, relation at every step by doing, so to speak, the classifying space of uh, take the classic triangle space in this direction. So now I will have a will be uh, a set of those and also for k equal one I impose that do not distinguish uh, where to put this bracket. Uh, the, uh, they will all be the same. Okay, and it's a bisimplicial, in fact, a cyclic time simplicial set. So, for example, if I have if I have this thing, which is where in C two uh, CL two comma two, correct? This is two, and this is two. So it will go in the Hochschild direction, it will go to It 
will go to this by d0. to this by d1, and of course, to this by d2, whereas in the, as usual, it will go And we agree that it doesn't matter what you mark by those parentheses. By this, and then, of course, by by this. So in this direction, it's like... Uh, It's the usual classifying space or nerve of this uh, plus operation. And here is the Hochschild thing, just like this. And uh, again, it's a, it's a cyclic simplicial object. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Lift I can, but, 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 but <laughs> lift I can, but there is something there also. I hold. Yeah, I hold. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a uh, and simplicial in the other. Yes, it is. This was my K, yeah. Yeah, and well, I guess at least kind of, again, maybe uh, one of competing definitions, but probably let me just define and last but not least, maybe Let me just make it uh, Morita invariant because uh, I am not sure and I think uh, what I can prove. So, of course, you know, pi, ze pi zero is well, nothing and pi one is a billion. And actually, uh, the, 
the invertible elements here yeah? and this but of course uh, if you have enough matrices then you uh, just maybe notation you know again i'm not sure how So let this stand for Lie algebra notation. So uh, and again, maybe in the spirit of Milner's book, let this stand for the. Let this stand for the group notation. Okay, and then so if I have an invertible matrix, I represent it like this, and then. So this thing will and uh, which is so this will be one minus a one zero and this will be one one minus a zero zero so those two uh, are the same and then of course when you conjugate by this it means that you also conjugate by this correct so it's uh, When you conjugate something, you can move this conjugating thing in another di dimension, and so it's all commutative. And uh, I have to double check. I think it also same proof says that it, uh, the fundamental groups a group acts trivially on the higher uh, higher homotopy groups. But frankly, I have to double check. Yeah, so maybe this kind of so we, uh, it's kind of close to algebraic a theory. We pardon? Huh? Steinberg. What is the relation to Steinberg? Yeah, let me uh, let me come to symbols now. Yes. Most probably, yes. Uh, most probably, I will give some. Uh, what's easy to write down is uh, in the commutative case over the rationals, if you compose it with HKR, then definitely. In general, it looks so, but I kind of, uh, I got confused, I think. Yeah, so. So 
So given two elements uh, where this is invertible, we can uh, exhibit a path in GLA. What is a path I will explain in a second. So if I start with this matrix, and I want to, you know, to put it uh, by row and column transformations to diagonalize it. So I can do two things. I can uh, and I will try to switch, you know, zero and one indices as you will see. I can multiply it by this on the left and by that on the right. And what I will get, uh, well, I can do it one more time, but I, yeah, I, I always, I always write this to the left. Uh, I hope it will not cause confusion. So this is one way to, to simplify it. But I can do it from the other side. If I want to kill this, uh, I uh, want to kill it on the right first. And I will get this. So in what sense path? Uh, I mean, <laughs> first of all, maybe uh, if I have any topology, then I just multiply this by T, yeah? So maybe I could stress it like those are dynamic, I mean, well, not constant variables. Yeah, I, I can vary them, but I must stay in GLN. It must remain invertible. Okay, so path will be maybe the best way is probably for me to. So let this be kind of algebraic simplex, so I don't impose any inequalities. And also, so of course, you know, I could just uh, add central commuting variables, and I will get another definition. But I, in general, I think in general, uh, well, the theorem says that this is, uh, this computes algebraic K theory. So it's like, is, it's this algebraic, maybe I should say that this maps to the singular complex of A whenever A has topology, just, you know, Uh, not of A, but of G, G of A. Correct. Uh, if I uh, 
And this is a sort of algebraic version. It is, uh, it is a simplicial group. Again, same, same formulas as there, you know, I could just put uh, ti to zero and I will get Same way as for the, you know, if they were real uh, actual continuous maps from simplices, I would have this. Okay. And then maybe slightly, yeah, so I guess this is the, uh, my main interest. Slightly inelegantly, you know, I of course, I can conjugate in L infinity, in uh, GL infinity. Well, I can connect uh, the flip to the identity matrix, but I can also do it as a composition of triangular matrices. Okay, so this is slightly inelegant. This is kind of more uh, invariant. So in particular, I have, uh, So when two elements commute, when two elements commute, I get a loop around uh, one minus a b, and uh, so I get an element of k two, algebraic k two. Uh, how does it relate to Steinberg? Yeah, so those are Dennis Stein symbols. So if also A is commutative, then I can take uh, the Stein symbol, the Steinberg symbol, uh, and uh, that's it. But this thing makes sense when A is not commutative, on, uh, is not invertible, only the other one is invertible. Okay. So then let me ask, should I say maybe, or okay, let me look at this. So as uh, uh, Alain said, look what happens. You have yeah, maybe 
what is yeah, my definition is that for any indices actually let it be that matrix but in, in those two indices and then And then I have this, and also uh, the other way around. So uh, I I can multiply those two facts and multiply those multiply those two facts. So now I get from here to here and then to here. But also I can do it directly uh, according to, to this. I could do it like this. So uh, I get, pardon? I get an element of pi one. Uh, yes, uh, I get an element of pi one now regardless, uh, commuting, not commuting, yes. And I claim that, uh, well, it's a trivial element. And in fact, so if, <laughs> if this is just the composition and this is just the composition, I mean, they are not equal on the nose, but they really differ by, uh, by conjugating by this. And so you, uh, you can, you can, uh, so this, uh, So if uh, well in K two usually we add, but uh, well if I if it's abelian group multiplicative notation then we recover those um, Dennis Stein uh, Dennis Stein um, relations. So I had been a colleague of Mike Stein for many years at Northwestern. And well, I did ask him, but maybe it wasn't kind of on top of my mind. I did ask him a, a few questions about this. I remember. Well, also I was the colleague of Andreas Suslin for many years. I also asked him, but again, without urgency. And, and before that, I was the colleague of uh, Leonie Wasserstein for many. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I asked all of them, but maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is one thing. The other thing, what happens if you have three elements? So then you have this matrix in the middle, which is, Ah, uh, what kind of in general, what uh, do they remember it and what would be a good definition and what is it good for? What is the relation to, to K theory?
So if we denote it like this, well, in coordinates, you know, or in indices, 0, 1, 2, uh, then one can start uh, doing the uh, same thing. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, if I do in cyclic order, one should do it. So if I'm not mistaken, maybe I am doing the wrong order, but uh, you, you have three options if you choose correctly the cyclic kind of uh, direction. You have this and then BC and then CA. And when you do this, you get those three things And that, so th these will, will become two by two matrices. You will kill, uh, you will have killed one of them, and you see that it's a b comma c, a comma b c, and I think yeah, in this version uh, c a comes on the end. It's uh, b so really d zero d one d two Hochschild. And then you can, uh, so now you can connect them by those paths as we did before. Again, it's not quite uh, there. You, you have to kind of you <laughs> close the zipper, I would say, like in, in the sleeping bag. So, but again, it's very simple. They, they differ by conjugating by E1 to B, but E1 to B commutes with this. So you could just contract this E1 to B to a trivial path. So you have such a thing. So this strongly suggests that strongly suggests that this uh, should I say maybe more precisely uh, This, this is known. On the other hand, as you see, it's just, you know, uh, if you ignore all the rest. So again, most probably, and I am, I am not ready to conjecture that they are mutually inverse, but yeah. Yeah. At least some piece of it, yes, yes, yes. Pardon? Yeah. 
Yeah, so this, I mean, it's almost there by universality. If uh, the, the fundamental group is commutative and I think that it, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm not prepared to say that it's an isomorphism and maybe it's even more interesting if it's not. Okay. And these are kind of, uh, well, hints. Now, And I kind of didn't do my homework, but uh, so there are two things to consider. Number number one, the usual kind of well candidate for being Chern character. Yeah, so it should map to Correct, uh, if we believe that it's uh, and frankly, <laughs> I am most probably, most probably it is, but But just the flavor, it's uh, very simple. It is, you don't need this uh, derived thing, yeah? You, you just need to. And, well, of course, you know that. Well, the differential here is zero. So this is one thing. Yeah, I, I, I should have thought more about it. Okay, on the other hand, okay, now I can erase. So let's say that you have the unit and you have a pronyl potent ideal. Then there is this uh, goodwill thing from K theory to cyclic homology of the same. Uh, correct. Uh, and then again, we. I will write or maybe rather unveil it uh, in a second. But I mean the same format as the cyclic homology, but with forms. And it should be commutative, of course. So I should. Yeah. 
and let me call it R for regulator. Yeah, and unveiling this. I was just reading this book last night and I found out, well, one could guess, I think, that detect, detect means unroof, you know, tech, uh, like uh, techo or twa or dach, I guess, in Ukrainian. Detect means unroof. Yeah. And also there was something about devil, you know, looking through the roofs at people and their four detectives were called devil's accomplices or something. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this is the, the format of the complex, yeah? And this is, uh, yeah, so I am not read it. Uh, it's not true that I just get rid of all those um, higher Ks. Oh, and again, I may have denoted it I mean, this is this uh, this is the plus uh, kind of classifying space uh, direction. Okay, so how would this map look like? Like, first of all, there is this shift in degree. So the pith column at k equal one, I would say it should go to the pith column and at k equal two, it has to go to the column on the left. So for example, yeah, so the kth level in those P plus K minus one, I think, column. And in fact, in fact, uh, it will go to zero when K is greater than two. So, uh, to what will it go? And this is, uh, yeah, if I am in, no, 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 it's in terms of, uh, yeah. In terms of polyglot, yeah, oops.
Yeah, so when I can <laughs> take it, I take it. And And there is an explicit formula, uh, kind of, well, something measuring how uh, log p plus two is not multiplicative, H how log of the product is not the product of some, uh, of a uh, product of those, yeah. Okay. Huh? Oh, really? My goodness, yeah, I, I thought it's, oh, sorry about this. Uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, it was till half past. Yeah, oh, sorry about yeah, this. Really? Oh my! <laughs> sorry about this. Yeah. Yeah, and well, uh, basically, I am done. Also, last thing, one of the motivations is uh, cluster algebras. So quantum torus, everything is invertible. Then, of course, you can take this uh, Steinberg symbol, and it is invariant under cluster transformation. So there is this beautiful automorphism of order five, and it's invariant. Now, in the quantum case, there is no uh, uh, for simplicity, maybe let me say this. So you could take this, unfortunately. It's not true that they do not commute. So uh, you could not take the Dennis Stein symbol. One minus B A is Q one minus A B. So, but then. It will be a path from one to Q. So it will be it will be in K two relative with the scalars, and again one one can prove that you know it's stable under quantum cluster transformations. And here the logarithm appears. There the logarithm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.